you are live. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for joining us this evening. We're going to talk uh, mostly about the water project and uh, also give an opportunity for BGE to give an update on their project and also talk about other city pro infrastructure projects coming, coming uh, in the Eastport area. Uh, but first, I wanted to introduce the folks on your screen. Um, there's quite a few of us, so if I miss somebody, please feel free to call out. Um, we have Alderman Arnett, uh, Hillary Rapovich um, from the mayor's office. Sorry about that, Hillary. Um, uh, from DPW, we have uh, Diane Doyan, who is the city project manager. We've got Jesse Berniston, um, our, one of our public works inspectors and utility assistant superintendent. Uh, from the water owners rep team, uh, we have uh, Donner, Don Miller, who's our project manager for the owner's rep. Uh, we have uh, Ken Gutman, who's also representing the owner's rep. Um, then we have Justin Junkins, who's the project manager for the uh, contractor for the water project. And then from BGE, we have Bill Schindler. Uh, be, directly from BGE, we have um, Ross Schofield and David Openshaw from Ligon and Ligon, the contractor for BGE. We have Nikia Mack, who's the uh, outreach coordinator. And um, I missed Mark Chrisman, our uh, designer for the owner's rep for the water project. Did I get everybody? Except for you, Julian. <laughs> So um, without further ado, I think we should just launch into the presentation. Um, so like I said, uh, the focus is today is on the water project, but we'll also get updates um, on the other projects. Um, we do ask that you wait till the end of the water and city uh, infrastructure um, presentation to uh, to field questions, but we're going to be fielding the questions through through the chat. Um, and you can put those questions in at any time, and and but we'll field them at the end of each presentation. Next slide, please. So the like I said, the project team for the water side is Justin Junkins, the um, we call it the design construction services team. It's essentially the design builder. He's the contractor project manager, the city's owner's rep, project manager, Don Miller, and myself as the city's project manager. Um, so next, Don's gonna talk a little bit more about the project itself. So. Great, thank you. Thank you, Tora. So our goal this evening, our goal this evening is to give you an overview of the Eastport water distribution replacement project. Uh, and in particular, what we're going to cover is you know, where it's located, uh, how the construction will get performed, um, how the impacted areas will get restored, the approximate approximate construction dates uh, for various streets and planned um, planned work hours, uh, what you can expect during construction, how our team will notify you, and how you can uh, obtain more information. So now the bold red lines on this area map uh, that you see show the phase two work area for the water replacement. And it shows, you know, again, in, in, the, in the bold red lines, uh, what street segments are getting replaced. So the big picture here from this is that the, of course, the water distribution replacements uh, for this project are from <clears throat> 6th Street to the end of the peninsula. Uh, it involves about 8,400 linear feet of uh, water main replacement, either 6 inch or 8 inch in diameter. Um, and then there's a little bit of other stuff, some individual valve upgrades at some of the intersections. And we're going to put a pressure test vault um, up at the uh, end of 1st Street by Spa Creek. Uh, next, please. 
So the particular street segments which were re, um, selected, which were selected for replacement, uh, these were based on the city's asset management plan. That's how they got selected. Um, the replacement work involves a couple elements. It involves, you know, it's 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 this it's the whole distribution system. So it's the new water mains in the street. It's the new water service lateral, um, you know, perpendicular to the water main up to and including the meter vault that gets replaced. And that's where it, it, it ends. It ends right there um, at the meter vault, new meter vault. Uh, it also will involve um, the fire hydrants within that network and the fire service lines that go to you know, certain properties. Um, now the benefits to you include you know, more reliable potable water service, uh, longer service life, less susceptible to leaks and outages. Um, I have a brand new system there. At this point, I'll turn it over to Justin Junkins from Mid Atlantic Utilities to explain more about the uh, plan, the planned construction approach. Uh, yeah, thanks, Don. Uh, so what we've done is we've broken this project into five individual uh, work areas uh, with work beginning on area one, which is the green area that's highlighted. Uh, we'll be starting in April, uh, starting with Bayshore Avenue and then working up to Eastern Avenue from there. Each work area is gonna be um, broken into some smaller segments, typically block to block uh, to minimize the overall impact so we're not spread across a, a large area all at one time. Um, the way that we've approached the project is with the initial crew coming and start area one, we do have a second crew that'll be moving in in June to start in area two with a focus on Fifth Street, and Severn Avenue with the goal being down there to to get that work complete uh, while school is out of session um, because of the uh, the elementary school that's down there and just trying to minimize the overall impact to the ingress and egress uh, whenever whenever school's in session. Um, from there, that second crew will go to area four and complete that work area with the crew that's working in area one, uh, moving to area three and then area five um, to completion of the work. So next slide, please. These are uh, just some examples of a typical water line installation activity you, you, you're going to see out there. Um, basically, you're gonna have open cut trenching in the streets. All excavations will be backfilled, temporarily restored at the end of every shift. Streets will be uh, broom swept. And uh, the water main replacement itself is a a multi-step process. So if you go to the next slide, please, we'll, we'll get into that. Um, we'll be utilizing uh, above ground temporary bypass for the majority of the streets uh, on this project, uh, with the exception of Sixth Street and Horn Point Drive. Uh, what you will see is these, these blue lines that you see in the, the photographs, it's temporary above ground water. Uh, we'll provide you with, obviously, your drinking water supply. We'll also provide temporary service to the fire hydrants that are impacted in a given work area. Um, all the lines will be tested per city of Annapolis and AWWA standards prior to, to being connected. And we'll also pay close attention to you know, any driveway crossings, uh, sidewalk crossings to make sure they're, they're installed to, to allow for ingress, egress for pedestrians and you know, safe foot traffic and safe, uh, safe vehicle traffic. Next slide, please. This part of the, the I guess, you know, the, the workflow, you know, once the water main's been installed, uh, come through, and this is a typical service installation that you can expect to see for a standard domestic water service. You've got your new copper service line from the main to the property line, uh, new meter setting, and then once it's completed, you know, um, surface restoration, sidewalks, uh, things of that nature. So this is uh, what what most residents are going to see in, in, in front of their home. Uh, next slide, please. Upon completion of all, all of the installations, uh, it's going to be permanent asphalt trench patching that will be completed. And then this is just another example of uh, final sidewalk restoration 
um, some lawn restoration associated with a fire hydrant installation. Um, so that's what you could expect um, as far as a, I guess we'll say a finished product once the water main installation is complete in a, in a given area. Uh, at that point, I'll turn this back over to Don. He goes to Tora. Or Tora. Fine. I'm sorry, Tora. <laughs> um, so, so what what can you expect during the water project? So, normal work hours for Mid Atlantic are between seven and five. There, there will likely be some exceptions to those. Uh, maybe during connections or works that would have a larger impact on uh, on uh, folks. So, um, hey, it's a construction project. You're gonna have some noise, you're gonna have some dust, but Mid-Atlantic does a good job as does Ligon and Ligon to you know minimize the impacts. Um, the parking restrictions, um, uh, there will be parking restrictions during the construction of each segment, but we'll limit that to small daily work zones um, as best we can. Um, the traffic control consists of uh, temporary lane closures. Um, you will see flaggers out there, signs, all that gets removed at the end of each day. Um, the temporary uh, bypass piping that uh, Justin mentioned and showed pictures of, we don't intend to have parking uh, limited for the bypass piping. So in other words, you'll still be able to park when the bypass uh, piping is along the street. Um, but you will definitely see it. And, you know, we ask that you are cautious um, around the, the bypass piping. And then lastly, there will be temporary water service interruptions. For example, when the new line and the, the old line is being abandoned and the new line is uh, being connected to. So next slide. So how are we gonna let you know uh, about what we're doing? So several ways, um, we have set up a website for the project projects in Eastport. There's some links there to, and I, I, I can show you that later. Um, Julian can pull that up later, but um, that's one way. And we ask that the best way for you to get regular notifications is to sign up on that website for email notifications. And then we can get those out to you whenever there's something um, about to start up. We'll also be distributing uh, notifications of the start of the construction in each area uh, prior to prior to that getting going. Um, for water service interruptions, we try to get a uh, notice out 48 hours in advance. These are for the larger water service interruptions, for example, when we're switching from old to new water and they'll uh, we'll have printed door notifications that go out to each area that's impacted um, by that. And then lastly, the last two items are our contractor notifications when um, they're gonna you know have to very sh for very short periods interrupt your water service or possibly be in front of your driveway and and limit limit your cars from getting in and out, but they will, come to your door and let you know that that's coming and work around your schedule so that we can make sure you can get in and out and uh, don't lose water for too long. Next slide. So um, here are the contact um, that we, I've spoke about before. Here's the contact information for each of us, uh, Justin, Don, and myself email addresses and, and phone numbers for each one of us. Next slide, please. So at, um, during and or after um, the water work, um, there is some sewer work that's coming. Diane uh, Doyen is the project manager for that work. Um, basically what she has going is uh, four manhole installations um, on the next slide. I'll tell you where, show you where those are that we're going to be installing 
in the fairly near, near term to provide access for pipe inspection equipment. And then once the pipe inspection equipment can get in and out of there, we will determine what other projects need to be done from a sewer. Most of that work is trenchless. The cured in place pipe is trenchless. So there's not as much excavation involved with sewer work typically. Next slide. Uh, these are the four locations that Diane has identified that require manholes to be installed um, in the next few months. And then following the sewer work and the water work and the gas work, um, the, all of the roads uh, will be restored uh, or will be repaved um, and, uh, and other uh, restoration work from a paving perspective or curb work. And then uh, this is the website that we spoke about. We have that we, the best way to reach us is to, um, to sign up for the email notifications. And this is the link to the website. And if you would switch over to that, Julian, I can real quickly show you, um, show where that is. So if you go to the DPW um, DPW site, public works site, and then off to the left side, you see projects in the city. Um, and then at the top is the Eastport infrastructure projects. And then there's a site there and there's links there for BGE. There's the location to subscribe for updates. We have a map, that map that we showed previously about where the manholes are going to be installed. And we'll update this regularly as, as we move along. But really, the best way is to reach out to us um, through the uh, regular, regular email updates. So that, if we go back to the presentation, I think we're ready to field questions uh, for the water, sewer, and paving city projects, if there are any. It looks like uh, Ross Arnett has a question. Yes, thank you. Um, will this um, PowerPoint be posted on the city website? And can you send it to me? And I can also send it around to my constituents. So yes. Um, so we will put it on that site that you were just looking at at the bottom, um, as well as uh, the pre the uh, video of this of this presentation. Okay, thank you. Um, so, uh, from what I understand, for the water, it's just going to those ports that are there at the sidewalk. It's not going from there up to the house. That is correct. So, so, so there won't be any new. It's, it's yeah. a little different than BGE. We don't go all the way to the house. We go to the meter and including okay. the meter fault. Okay. Um, I do have PG&E questions, but that's it for the water. When, when is this starting? Just in late March, early April. Thank you. Yes, yeah, so we'll be uh, starting on Bayshore Avenue. That'll be the, the, the first, first work area. Thank you. Tora, I wanted to ask a few questions that I think people will want to know. <laughs> okay. Um, if somebody is planning to be out of town during any of this period, is there anything they need to do? Do they need to let you know in advance that they won't be at their home? Yes, that would be a good idea. Um, and we usually include that in our first notice that goes out. We, we ask that people let us know ahead of time um, and uh, in terms of parking on the street, if there's parking on the street, we ask that they um, avoid the work area if they're gonna be out of town for a period of time. So yes. Thank you. So, and they can email you through that web. web Absolutely. Right? Um, my next question is for, if anybody has special water needs, 
um, because of health issues or anything else that they want you to know about, they can also let you know through that website. Is that correct? Yes. So if there's yeah, it's really email folks. notifications at this point. So you just go to the get on the email notification or email one of us and and we will make sure we'll take care of you. And my last question is on the water. Is there anything that residents need to do to prepare their homes for when the water is turned off, when they get a water notification? Should they be doing anything special or anything to prepare their home? Uh, Justin, do you want to take that? I. Uh, yeah, typically there, there, there's really nothing special that, that needs to be done. Um, the, the only thing we do typically recommend to people is you know, don't don't flush your toilet right away. That way you've got a flush in your pocket whenever the water's out if you need it. Um, otherwise, no, nah, there's really nothing special that needs to be done. Uh, as Taurus said, the, the interruptions um, will be brief. And the one thing about the use of the temporary bypass system is it minimizes the number of service interruptions that are necessary um, because while we're doing some of the mainline connections, um, we're keeping everybody in service with that temporary system. So uh, no, there's really nothing special that they would they would have to do outside of you know, their, their normal day to day. And what about when the water's turned back on? Do they need to flush their system or anything? So typically um, what we'll do is, um, you know, as they're jumping services to the temporary lines, and then obviously when the new service connection's been installed, they've installed the meter pit, um, we do uh, attempt to, to flush through an outside hose bib. Um, if there isn't one available, our, our crews will make contact with the resident and ask them to run some water just to make sure everything's, you know, functioning properly. They're not, you know, there's going to be air in the system, things like that. One thing um, I, I would recommend is, you know, if if you know there's been a, a service interruption that day and say you weren't home, um, open an upstairs faucet first. That uh, that will bleed all the air out of your system. Um, so that, that would be a good piece of information for everybody to have. Great. Those are really helpful. Thank you. And also, I just wanted to say for anyone who's watching on um, YouTube and would like to ask questions, you can put it in the YouTube chat and I'll share those questions. That's all I've got. Thanks, Tora. All right. Thank you. Uh, are there any other questions for the city? Yes. Uh, this has to do with BG&E. Um, I have gotten some concerns because people did, did, did not get notice and have either been trapped in their driveway or could not get to their uh, uh, through to their driveway in their garage. Um, I don't know. I don't know why that happens, but um, it has um, brought on some consternation. There's also been um, some damage to sidewalks and decorated, you know, ornamental sidewalks, but also plants. Um, and I assume that there's going to be some kind of a follow-up to repair that, but I don't know when that's going to happen. Thank you. Um, we have gotten some notifications uh, regarding uh, our communications, and we plan to send out some reminders, some updated information. We're going to share that Hopefully we can get those uh, letters and correspondence out next week. Um, we also are going to give residents the option to opt in to uh, text message updates so that they can follow where our crews will be um, on a weekly basis. That may help them understand, you know, who's getting services done and where our crews are installing main. Um, no one should really be trapped in or out of their driveway. It may take some time, but the contractors do uh, allow people in and out of their driveways or garages. It may just take some time for them to make the area safe with some steel plates and things like that. Um, one thing we would like to share and communicate with residents is that if they just communicate 
with the blaggers and the men out in the uh, area that have on the reflective jackets that they need to get into their homes and just be patient with them, they will allow or, or make some provisions for them to have access when it's safe. Is there something I can put in my constituent email, uh, some material that restates the general principles that you just gave? I'll be happy to send that out. Alderman, when I get back in the office tomorrow, I can pull up some frequently asked questions. That would um, be perfect. And I can send that over to your office. That would be wonderful. Uh, your you. office is sort of a euphemism for older persons. We don't really have one, but. <laughs> Thanks, Nikia. Will you also have, so that option to sign up for texts, will that be on our um, infrastructure page that we were just discussing? If this presentation is going to be made public, then our last slide does uh, have a QR code in the text uh, information for that. Thank you for that. And we have a question from Vic Pasco. He said, glad to hear that the streets will be repaved. Lots of residents are counting on this. Will everyone's meter be upgraded so that the streets won't need to be opened and dug up again once repaved? And will curbs also be repaired since everything will already be dug up? Yeah, and I can take that. Uh, yes and yes um, for all of the areas that we showed on the map. So in other words, where there's a main that has your service on it, um, your service will be replaced all the way and including the meter vault um, and the meter itself. Uh, in terms of curb work, Yes, our contractor is required to restore everything that has been excavated if, if, it, if they excavate and, and uh, damage the curb, then they restore the curb work. If it was damaged prior to that, that will be a question that I would pass on to Jen fight our uh, road work. Uh, engineer just to make sure that that's something that gets taken care of when she comes through in the final pass. And and a question that I get a lot of times on on um, projects like this is or a reminder I like to share with people is that we do each at each phase they're doing temporary restoration of these roads and that at the very end they'll do the final repaving. So so don't worry when you see patchy paving along the way. <laughs> Thank you for that. I think we're ready to move on to the next section at the end of the questions. And Vic says, thank you. <laughs> Welcome Vic. Uh, Tori, do you want Julian to put the the slideshow back up. Yes, he needs to pull up the BGE portion. Okay, so we'll be hearing from BGE next. Correct. Sorry about that, it's coming up right now. Good evening, everybody. Thanks again for allowing us to uh, present updates for the BGE Operation Pipeline or gas project that's happening in the Eastport area. Next slide. And Julian, we're not seeing it in uh, presentation mode. Can you turn on the presentation mode? There we go. Thank you. Um, uh, this evening, I am joined by uh, Ross Goldfield from Ligon and Ligon, who's the contractor for the gas project, uh, and William Schindler, who's the BGE project manager. 
Mike Tucker is the BGE inspector that's out on site. Uh, he couldn't be with us this evening. And I'm Nakia Mack. I'm the outreach manager for uh, the Operation Pipeline projects. Next slide. Our, con our construction is active and ongoing. We uh, estimate the project to be complete in October of this year. Uh, our work hours are Monday through Friday, 7 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, we do have some possible Saturday and Sunday work hours uh, that we may need to take advantage of due to weather or some other unforeseen uh, item that may arise in the field. Our work is weather dependent. Um, so during some rainy weather, we, you may not see us out in the field. Um, so we may take advantage of those Saturday and Sunday hours to make up for things like that. Next slide. Similar to the uh, water work, our work has been set up in segments. We are working in four different segments. Uh, each segment is identified by a different color here on this slide. The pink is segment one, the blue is segment two, segment three is highlighted in the peach color, and segment four in green. Um, we have most recently been working in segments one and two. Next slide. There, we have several different crews working often during, throughout the day um, because we have crews that are installing main uh, gas main and crews that are conducting service uh, connections. Um, this work is a phased approach. Uh, what you see here is just letting you know what has been completed thus far in the pink or the lavender color in, in segment one. Uh, the main work and service connections have been completed. However, we do have uh, some lingering repairs that we, or minor service work that we still need to complete on Riverview and Horn Point. Um, and then we will be doing final abandonment for that segment. In segment two, the yellow indicates where our preliminary test pitting uh, data is available. The green is an indication where we have installed the gas main and also introduced gas to those mains. The blue line indicates where our gas main has been installed, but we have not introduced any gas to that main yet. So there's still some work to be done in that area. If you notice, we have not started any construction in segments three and four as of yet. As I stated, um, we are working on getting some updated or reminder uh, communications out to the community. This has been a long project. So our initial communication happened um, some time ago. So we are gonna send out some reminder communications as well as when service, uh, service work is needed, uh, residents will get a postcard from us. That postcard will just let them know that Ligon and Ligon does need to uh, have access to their homes to do that service work. Next slide. As I stated earlier, we are offering residents, um, business owners, anyone in the community, uh, a chance to opt in for routine update text messages. If you scan the QR code you see to the right or text BGE Eastport 2 to the number identified, that will opt you in for those text messages. And then what we would like to do is routinely at the beginning of the week, send notification to, to those that have opted in as to where the main and service crews will be working in the area. Next slide. If for any reason uh, there's a problem or concern, you can always reach us at uh, operationpipeline at bge.com or reach out to our hotline at 410-470-7700. Uh, that will get you to our office and we can uh, take care of that. I, um, Alderman Arnett, I did hear you say that some residents had concerns about some property damage they can always reach out to us 
and we can have Ligon and Ligon investigate and get back to them as soon as possible. Next slide. Thank you for having us and the team is here to answer any questions that you guys may have of us. Again, if you could uh, send me this, I'd be happy to send it out to my email list. I think people would like the reminder uh, of the update of the information. Yes, sir. Thank you. And I don't see any questions in the chat on either platform, so. You guys are too good. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you. I appreciate you taking the time to do this. And I will, as I say, get things out to people and also uh, keep reminding them that they can go to the city's website and take advantage of all the access there. So um, they can ask you questions rather than me. <laughs> we hope they do. We hope they come to us first. Good. <laughs> And I'll work with the public information officer to get um, some FAQs put together from the information that you've shared tonight. And we'll Great. add that to the web page as well. Great, thank you. Wow, 40 minutes. <laughs> <laughs> the record. <laughs> Is that everything? All right. Uh, thank you. Nothing else.